Okay guys, listen, hear me out. Is this the dumbest video idea I've ever had? Possibly. Here's my thinking, okay? I have three new foundations in front of me. That's all I feel like trying right now. I just want to know which foundation is the bombest, most bomb out of all of them. Okay, so what we're gonna do, <laughs> instead of Game of Cups, because Game of Cups is over, we're moving on with our lives, it's the Game of Foundations. And we're gonna see which is the winner, because you either win or you die. So I will kill whoever loses. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> So the three foundations I'm gonna be trying today are the Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation. So this is a new foundation. They're all new. This is weightless liquid foundation and it's supposed to be up to 24 hour wear. I'm not gonna test that claim. No one should be wearing foundation for 24 hours. Then I'm gonna be using the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation Fond de Tant. Great, finally. Natasha Denona Foundation X Full Coverage Fruit Complex. Like the sound of the fruit. I don't know about the rest of that. We'll see. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna start with the most expensive. Wait, wait. <laughs> I have to set the ground rules. <laughs> let's not do this crazy. Okay, I'm gonna put the same products underneath the foundation. I'm gonna apply the foundations all the same way so that we can get a good indication. Wait, hold on a second. Maybe I'll apply one side with a sponge and one side with a brush. That sounds, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, let's do this. Let me really get my hair out of the way here. I'm gonna start by putting uh, my Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer underneath. So I'm just gonna like press that into my skin. And that's gonna be our base for all of the foundations. Because why not? Let's keep it fair, you know? I think we should start, should we, I think, let's start with the least expensive and move our way up. Okay, Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation. When I swatched this on my hand, I was like, mm-hmm, this looks fucking nice. So I'm excited to try this one. I got shade 20NN, let's see how this goes. I'm gonna take a little bit of that. I'm nervous, okay. Let me take that on my uh, little sponge first and we'll see how this goes. Need this mirror. Ooh, maybe I'll zoom you guys right in close to my acne-ridden skin. Okay, so you guys can really get the full effect here. Boop. Oh, fuck, is that really light? This is going horribly wrong already. Okay, let me just try and... Oh, this is okay. I think this is gonna be okay. Everything's fine. I came to this point where I was looking at all my foundations and I was like... At what point was I this tanned? I wasn't. I thought I moved on from my tan foundation days. Apparently I didn't. But now I've been buying really light foundations and then I get home and I'm like, I'm not, I'm also not this white. So I have much confusion <laughs> around my foundation shade. It is a hard time for me. I don't think I like this applied with a well, hold on a second here. See, okay, the reason I was originally attracted to this foundation is because in store, it looked super like dewy on my hand and I was like, that's for me. But now that I'm putting it on my face, I just don't know. I'm not gonna put any concealer on with these because I want you to really get the full effect foundation alone. So that's the one side done with a sponge and that was like one pump. So we're looking at the difference, we're seeing it. Okay, let's move on to this side, which I'm gonna do with my, my e.l.f. brush. Okay, I'm gonna take my e.l.f. 105 brush, Batman vibes, okay. And I'm gonna dot that all over my face first. I wish I could be bald while I'm doing my makeup and then just put my hair back on. I mean, I guess that's an option in, in some ways. Okay, I'm gonna dot that all over my face and then I'm going to press that into the skin towards the center of the face. And then when we get more to the outskirts, I can do my little buffing motions. And that's just to keep the coverage where we want it, which is right in the center. And that's a little light. I feel like this side is like kind of drying down to be a good color, but upon first application, maybe just a touch light. 
I'm probably gonna touch up my nose with a sponge after, to be honest with you. Gosh, I was like the most excited for this foundation, but I kind of don't like it at all. Hold on, let me just really take a little looky-loo here. God, I just, I hate it so much. Okay, I really was excited about this foundation. I thought it was gonna be true love. Um, <coughs> I like the coverage. I feel like it's a good kind of like medium coverage foundation and it is more of a true medium. I do feel like I was able to like build up the coverage a little bit. Like I can even go over here with the sponge and kind of go over top. Yeah, I definitely do feel like it builds up quite well and it doesn't look like odd when you are building up that coverage. So medium buildable for sure. Let me write this down. I prefer how it looks with a sponge, although there's not a huge difference between the two. I think that the sponge makes it look just a little bit more kind of like skin finish. Uh, and this side looks quite a bit more matte and dry. This is supposed to be, it did say on the little displayer that it was supposed to be natural matte skin finish or something like that. I feel like this is like a little bit too too matte for me. I feel, personally, I don't feel like a matte finish ever looks like skin. A satin finish, how dare you? We're talking about very important things over here. <laughs> I feel like a, a satin finish looks the most natural or like skin finish to me. Matte just looks too, too fucking matte, bro. And that's like goes beyond personal preference. Like even when I was doing makeup on clients and stuff like that, I still felt like a matte foundation just always kind of made them look a little too flat, didn't have enough dimension basically. So I feel like this is a little bit too matte for me. Um, I would not call this a satin finish at all. I can kind of already see, I'll zoom you guys right in nice and close. I can kind of already see around these areas where I have a little bit of texture and like fine lines that it's kind of already creasing into there. And I've had this on for minutes. So I don't like that. Even around here, like pores is not something that I would say that is uh, like skin concern of mine. Like I wouldn't say that there's a lot of things that really emphasize the texture of my pores because my skin is so dry that my pores are quite small. Uh, I've said pore a million times just now. That was really bizarre. Okay. Anyways, um, but I do feel like this actually emphasizes the texture of my pores in a way that I'm like, hmm, I'm noticing it, you know? Over here on the brush side, I feel like you can kind of see we weren't buffing in this area, we were like pressing it into the skin, but I still feel like it kind of caught on a lot of like dry skin there. Same issue with the pores over here, and I feel like there's like a lot of product buildup, which could just, like I mean, I think that has more to do with the brush application than anything. Even around this area, I feel like it looks quite dry, and that's on skin that's, I mean, I have Botox, dude. Like, that's skin that's quite smooth and doesn't have a ton of texture, and I still feel like it ends up looking quite dry there. So, I don't think I'm a fan. <coughs> yeah, I just don't know about that. Um, and keep in mind that this is over top of a hydrating primer. So I just don't know how this would be over top of like bare skin. I think definitely if I was to recommend this foundation to anyone, it would be more towards those of you that have oilier skin. I personally wouldn't recommend this to those of you that deal with any kind of like skin texture issues. So be it like acne, dryness, whatever. So if you have oilier skin and your skin's quite clear, um, you probably would like this foundation. If you have any kind of texture going on, fine lines, all that kind of stuff, I don't know that you would love it just because of those little things that I pointed out. But medium buildable coverage, finish is definitely more on the matte side, not intensely, intensely matte, but definitely a lot drier looking than a lot of other foundations I've tried. And the color match actually, I feel like, is okay. Once it dries down, it looks, yeah, it looks pretty good. I don't feel like it pulled particularly red or yellow. It, it's pretty fucking bang on neutral. So if you could take that color, Urban Decay, and put it into the sheer finished dewy foundation of my dreams, that'd be great. <laughs> Thanks so much, babe. Okay, let me take this off and do it all over again. <coughs> I'm dying. <coughs> okay, I have a cough drop in. Round two, I have my primer on, my little moisturizing primer. We're gonna try the Natasha Denona Foundation X Full Coverage Fruit Complex Foundation. So, I did not buy this one. This was sent to me because Natasha Denona will not listen to me <laughs> every time she sends me a package. I say, please take me off your PR, and she will not. So here we are. Um, I have this. 
I'm gonna try shade 20Y. Ooh, it's kind of separating. Like, am I supposed to? I'm, I'm, okay, judging by that little ball sound that's in there, I'm assuming that yes, I am supposed to shake this. Shake before use, okay, great. I see why, because there's a bunch of like, it's all separating and weird. I'm gonna start with my little foundation sponge first and dot that on. See, that one's probably a little dark and a little yellow. Oh, super yellow. Natasha, Natasha, Natasha. Let me mix a little bit of 20Y, 10Y. Okay, well now I just have a shit ton of foundation on. That's okay. We'll apply it sheer on the other side. Wow, that is fucking full coverage, eh? Dang. Even with a sponge, like that's pretty full coverage. Damn, dude. I like those colors mixed, actually. I feel like that's my preferred shade. Okay, so there we are with the sponge side. I actually, um, I don't love the color. I'm gonna try and like mix the color to be a little bit better on my other side. I don't mind it, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Okay, let's apply with a sponge. So I'm gonna take <clears throat> like 75% of 10Y and then 25% of 20Y. That'll probably be better, okay. Mm -hmm. That's probably way too much foundation. Okay, let's just try it. So taking my little e.l.f. brush, same thing. I'm going to press that into the skin in the center of the face. And then once we get to the outside, buffing. Okay, I definitely, well, hold on. I think I prefer the coverage when I'm applying it with a sponge or a brush. Let's just see close up though. Okay, let me zoom you in super close here. We have our sponge side. Let me take up my cough drop. So we have our sponge side here. Um, definitely fuller coverage with that sponge. I have a dog hair here. Gosh. Okay, this is the one that I was expecting to like the least. I'm just gonna start by saying that. I quite like the finish. Like this to me is not a finish that's super dewy or ridiculous. I feel like this is satin, maybe leaning towards being a little bit more dewy, but this to me is more of like a skin finish foundation. Like I quite like the finish of this actually. I don't feel like I put this on and I'm like, wow, I look like the fucking Sahara. I really, really like the finish of this a lot. I feel like it's not overly dewy. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this to oily people, even though it does have a little bit of that shine to it just because it looks nice. But like on my chin here, you can see that like it's not making me look oily kind of thing. It just has like this nice shine on like the larger kind of planes of your face. I think it, the finish is so fucking nice. The coverage is definitely full coverage. Like on the sponge side, just with like one application and you could probably build this up quite a bit more. Let's kind of see how it looks built up. Oh yeah, same thing. This builds up quite well as well. So that coverage is pretty high coverage as is, but you can definitely shear it out if you are applying it with a brush and build it up no problem in the areas that you need it with a sponge or whatever. Damn, I kind of think I fucking like that foundation. Um, but I'll just kind of show you guys here too, like around that area that looked super dry and it looked a lot more patchy with the Urban Decay foundation. You can see here, like, I mean, obviously I still have texture there, but it's way less noticeable. It doesn't look super dry. It doesn't look like it's like picking up underneath the skin or something like that. It's just kind of sitting on top, chilling, living its life, you know? So I quite like how that looks over top of texture. I don't feel like it overemphasizes my pores. Like I don't feel like that product looks like it's sitting inside of my pores or anything like it did with the last one. And even right in this area where I showed you guys that it looked a little bit dry, I feel like it looks quite a bit better with this one. I fucking like this foundation. Natasha, you've done it again, you dirty dog. Shit, yeah, okay, wow, this is like the winner for me so far. So, Finish for this guy is full and buildable. I would say the finish is satin and I'm loving every minute of it. Looks great. Let me take this off, reapply my primer and then we're gonna move on to this ridiculously priced Pat McGrath foundation. Okay, BRB. Okay, primer is back on and we're back in business. Let's do this. Now, I'm gonna be trying the $90 Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. If this is not Sublime Perfection, 
I want my money back, Pat. Okay, so I got this in the shade Light 3. We're just gonna see how this goes. The packaging, I must say, lovely, just divine. I really, really like the packaging a lot. Even the little box it comes in, look at this. Very nice. I was expecting to like the Urban Decay foundation the most. I was expecting to like this one second best and the Natasha Denona one the worst. So Natasha Denona is currently in first place. Urban Decay isn't even on the board for me. We're gonna see how this goes. I'm just squishing out my sponge. Okay, I've got my little sponge. I'm gonna press that on. Damn, it looks so light. Okay, it'll probably dry it down, it'll be fine. I need to relax. Hmm. So many people are asking me to review this one. And then I kept like looking at the price and being like, <laughs> no, it's just so expensive. And like, I know that all of Pat McGrath's stuff is so expensive, but this is like one found, like with her eyeshadow palettes and Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes and stuff like that. It's like, yes, it's so expensive, but like you're getting a ton of product and very few people actually like work their way through an eyeshadow palette. Most of us sit on eyeshadow palettes for like years and years and years kind of thing, but I'm like, this is a foundation. If I liked this foundation, I could end up wearing it every day. $90, I just don't know. I am liking the look of this so far for surfer, uh, which I'm pretty upset about because I don't want to. That's like when I tried that La Mer foundation and it was actually just quite nice. Damn. This is really hurtful. Let me take a little bit of that underneath my eyeballs. Ugh. Why do I ever doubt her? Well, well, well. Okay. Let me do the brush on this side. Okay, so we're gonna dot that on. Same thing, pressing to the center of the face and then buffing towards the outside. Dang. I'm really loving how this is like looking right now. Okay, I have some thoughts. I have some thoughts for sure. Let me zoom you guys in. This one's definitely a little bit dewier. I would say that this is airing a little bit um, more on the dewy side than the Natasha Denona one, which this is what's so interesting. When I put this one on my hand, it looked so dewy in the store. When I put the Pat McGrath one on, on my hand, the reason like, aside from the price, one of the reasons that I didn't want to pick that up is because it looked so dry on my hand and I was like, dude, like, and it was just like going into all of the cracks on my hand and shit and I was like, this is gonna be a dry skin nightmare. But it does definitely have more of a dewy kind of finish to it. Uh, very skin-like, especially in these larger areas, I think that the foundation looks fantastic. Over top of my kind of texture here, it does look a little dry. It's not my favorite there. Like I way preferred the Natasha Denona one over top of texture. Pore area looks fine. Um, maybe a little bit more pronounced than it was with the Natasha Denona one. The coverage for me, I would say is more on the medium side. I wouldn't necessarily call this a full coverage foundation. I can't remember what it was marketed as. I think it was marketed as being full coverage. Let me look on Sephora really quickly. Even the buildability, I don't know. Like the other two I found to be quite a bit more buildable where I could get a very full coverage kind of finish over top of like these areas that are a little bit more red. Yeah, weird. I don't feel like it's super buildable. It's kind of just like what you, what you get is what you get. This is supposed to be a long wearing customizable foundation that builds from sheer to medium coverage in a wide range of universal hues that manifest the ultimate sublime skin standard. Wow, okay. I would not call this sheer in any world. <laughs> Maybe if you, like it definitely applied a little bit more sheer with the brush, um, but this is not what I would consider a sheer finish foundation personally. Maybe if you were used to using like very, very full coverage, you would look at this and be like, ooh, this is really sheer. Um, but I would call this more of a true medium. I don't feel like it's particularly customizable or that you can build it up that much. I mean, I could sit here and like let it like fully dry down and try to go over top, but I still feel like just based on what I was kind of seeing in this area, I still feel like it's not able to be built up that much. Like I like it on this side where I don't have a lot of discoloration or redness, but over top of those areas, like I would definitely feel the need to go in and spot correct for sure. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't love that I 
can't build up the coverage very much. I really like the finish of it. I think this foundation for me is like literally right down the middle. Like it's not phenomenal. It's not garbage. I'd wear it again, but I'm the most blown away by the Natasha Denona one. And it's $30 less. I just don't know, Pat. I just don't know. That's like a huge jump. Like I feel like, okay, if I was putting this foundation on a model, with perfect flawless skin, I'm sure it would be like unreal. Like I saw this being put on Sandra Deluxe and I was like, okay, obviously that looks phenomenal because Sandra's the most beautiful woman on the planet. No foundation will look bad on her. <laughs> I do like it in the areas where my skin is super clear. Like I feel like it has a really, really nice finish to it. Like this right here, that little glow, love it divine sublime really i mean i would say i was go i would go as far as to say that but in the areas that i do have texture i feel like it looks a little bit cakier and a little bit more dry and i just don't feel like i can build it up that much so i would have to go in with a spot corrector the color actually i feel like is okay maybe not as good of a match as that first urban decay one was i don't know how you guys feel on camera but i don't know Gosh, I'm just a little torn on that one. I feel like it's really fucking expensive and I want it to be just perfect if it's that expensive, but maybe I can learn to love again. I don't know. Oof. Okay, so I forgot to mention about the Pat McGrath one. I felt like the Pat McGrath foundation out of all of them had the most finicky application. I felt like with the Urban Decay one and the Natasha Denona one, it was pretty easy to get like a nice kind of even coverage. It wasn't super streaky or anything like that. The Pat McGrath one was the only one that I felt like I had to kind of go back to certain areas and like really press the foundation into the skin or blend out any kind of streakiness or whatever. So I think that that one might be just a little bit more watery than the rest of them. I don't know, I don't know what it is but I just found that that one had a little bit more kind of um, just a little bit more finicky during application definitely not anything that I can't work through but I noticed in certain areas especially because it's not particularly buildable in my opinion there's a few areas where I kind of wanted to kind of go back over top of it because I felt like it wasn't a really nice even application right out the gate and it, I couldn't really get it to where I wanted it to be do you know what I mean I don't know so I don't love that about this foundation, but let me go through my little notes for each thing that I've written on this envelope. <clears throat> so the first one that we tried was the Urban Decay one. This retails at $53 Canadian. I would definitely say that this is like a medium buildable foundation. Definitely true buildable. I would say that this air is more on the matte side, definitely. It looked quite dry over top of any kind of texture or anything like that. Really settled into my pores, fine lines um, within minutes of wearing it. So wearing it longer term would kind of result in more of that if I had to guess. Then we tried the Natasha Denona one, which uh, retails for $60 Canadian. I would say this is definitely a full coverage and it is buildable as well. I, I wish, I mean, I, I think I'm gonna keep using that foundation and shearing it out a little bit, but I think it's just such a beautiful foundation even when it's full coverage, which is rare for me. A lot of the times when I put on a full coverage foundation, I'm like, Ooh, like it just looks really really mask like but because it does have that more kind of satin skin finish makes it a lot more wearable for a full coverage foundation and I felt like that one sat the best over top of texture and stuff like that Pat McGrath what are you doing it retails for $90 Canadian so that's $30 more than the Natasha Denona one the finish I would definitely call more radiant the coverage is like a true medium for me and I don't feel like it's particularly buildable and I did just find this a little bit dry over texture and a little bit kind of um, finicky with the application and stuff. I really do think that this foundation would be stunning. I mean any foundation is stunning on people that have like perfect skin but this is a foundation that I'm like yeah I can see how a makeup artist that works on like some of the most beautiful people in the world could develop this foundation and be like this is truly sublime and then I have um acne scars so it's just not quite the same <laughs> but I do I like this one I think I'm gonna try and play around with it a little bit more because I'm just curious like if I mix it in with a moisturizer and stuff if I will end up liking it a little bit better uh, I just don't know I, I don't know that I'm 
loving the fact that I can't build it up the way that I like to. That one's really going in the maybe pile for me. I don't think I would repurchase just like based off this. I would 100% not repurchase that Urban Decay one. And then Natasha Denona one, which I thought I would like the least. It's kind of fucking nice, bro. It's kind of fucking nice. Okay, you guys, that is my foundation battle royale. Um, thanks so much for joining me. If this was so stupid, I'm so sorry for forcing you to watch it. Uh, but if you liked it, let me know. If there's other foundations that you feel like I really, really need to try, you just tell me because I love um, just being in Sephora and spending all of my money there. I wish that they had a better rewards program. I'll never, I'll never get over it. Anyways, okay, thank you guys so much. I will see you next time. Peace out.